something far more interesting. Now at last, Brianna raises her hand. Brianna of the burnished hair. Brianna of the B-minus mind, who yet believes Brianna deserves an A for breathing. Reading an essay of Brianna's will make you fear for the future of America, will make you hiss what the fuck are you talking about aloud at a bar where you have to go and get drunk on Pinot Grigio in order to grade Brianna's paper, so that the bartender will say to you, Miss, are you all right? He will even put his hand on your shoulder, he is that concerned. And you will say, I'm fine, I'm so sorry. And you will look up into his face and his eyes will be so blue and kind. You will recall when such a face and torso stirred something deep inside you in a place where there are now only dead leaves skittering. You will look back at Brianna's paper. You will observe that she chose the Garamond font. You will proceed to write B minus in the top left hand corner, even though it is a C tops. But you will hesitate, your pen suspended over the page. You will mentally fast forward to the moment when you hand Brianna her essay back, branded with this B minus. She will receive it and immediately look as though she has been stung by a thousand wasps, and you will wish that she would have brought this to her performance of Juliet. You will watch her face redden, first with embarrassment, then with outrage, her chin tilt up, up, up in defiance. She will assume that you have given her this grade because you are an idiot and or jealous of her beauty and youth. You are not the former, but you are most certainly the latter. And so it is not without some fear, some guilt, that you will watch Brianna march toward your desk after class, watch her flip her shining hair around in an attempt to blind you as she complains, watch her eyes grow big and wet and desperate, watch her outrage bloom like an out of control flower. For this is not the way of the universe, the universe of Brianna, in which you are merely a cog in the great machinery of her ultimate success. The universe wishes for Brianna to succeed, to win. Hearing Brianna protest like this, knowing your own inner failings, you might bow down to her will. You might hand over the A because you are so tired. Because Brianna's voice hurts not only your hip and spinal cord, it also lights up your inner red webs, flashing more quickly under her gaze. You might spare yourself all of this and give her the damn day to start with. And Brianna won't even thank you for this. She'll just feel like you were an unfortunate spider creeping around her dollhouse, but you were kind enough to die on your own. After all, her parents are donors to the school's decrepit theater department, hence the fact that you have heard the soliloquies of Shakespeare's most complex and formidable heroines die in her unworthy throat. I hate that I want Brianna to like me, even though I hate Brianna, and I hate that I hate Brianna, because what is Brianna's future going to be, really? A few years in the big city, pursuing her acting passion to no end? because there will be no mother or father to open the doors to those gilded places. She'll be forced at last to stare her own mediocrity in the face. She'll marry a stockbroker, start a vegan mommy blog, enlist her future spawn in ballet. Grow up, I tell myself, be the adult, be the teacher. Lie to this long-haired child and tell her the reason we are doing this play is because it will stretch her and her fellow cast members to take on a play that is disturbing, but not in an obvious bloodbath orgy way, that is witchy without the cackling hags, that is funny sad rather than simply sad, that is dark light rather than just dark, just light, that is problematic, provocative, complex and mysterious, a hidden mountain flower growing in the shade of Shakespeare's canon that hasn't been put on by a million fucking schools already. Miranda, Brianna says. Brianna always calls me Miranda, never Miss Fitch, let alone Professor. She looks at me now and I cower. Can you believe this? I brace myself, brace myself for, couldn't we warm up first? She already begins to stretch her body in anticipation, stretches her arms high above her head. See how much my body needs and loves this. I have a vision of killing her. It's not the first time. We really need to get a move on, I'm afraid, I tell her. I always forget their warm-ups. I can't help it, I hate the warm-ups, leading them through that. It pains me to watch them, how their movements are so easy, so quick. Lubricate their already lubricated bones. Give oxygen to their already oxygenated musculature. Make their faces grow flushed. 
Really, it's like watching them all fuck. Brianna warming up is the worst. The sight of Brianna's lithe body moving beneath the stage lights actually hurts my eyes, causes them to water. It's like staring directly at the sun. It's like willing yourself to go blind. I'll do a quick one for them, Miranda, Grace says quietly in my ear. I turn to her, standing beside me now. Fine, I say, fine. I dissolve into the dark wing. There, I watch their bodies bend and sway. I grab a bottle from my pocket and pop another pill. I don't even bother to check which bottle. From something small, something great.